welcome to Hot Weekly. I'm Jonathan. I'm Crystal. And this is Haunt Weekly, a weekly podcast for the haunted attraction, haunted entertainment industry. Whether you're an actor, owner, or just plain aficionado, we aim to be a podcast for you. And it's that magical time of year where we talk about the dead rising <laughs> and all bunch and really, really gory stuff. Um, yeah. You know, Easter. Yes. <laughs> it's Easter season. And that's what we're doing this week. We're doing an Easter special. Right. Well, and with haunts branching out and doing more and more holidays, maybe we should look into some of these and see how it can be incorporated. And that's something we've been kind of doing this lately. Right. As holidays have been coming up, we've been, you, no, no, we, you, (laughs) you have been pulling out your laptop and researching weird traditions all over the world that are a little messed up sometimes. Yeah. And maybe could be incorporated into a haunt. We're going to talk more about that in a minute, though. Right. We're coming around to that. So first things first, definitely, if you have not done this already, if you're somehow just like stumbling across this MP3 on the internet, take a quick moment. Find Follow us on Haunt Weekly at Facebook or Haunt Weekly at Twitter. We are also at hauntweekly.com and tinyurl.com slash hauntweekly will take you to our YouTube channel where all the episodes are stored for posterity and posteriors. (laughs) And you may listen to them all there. I think you will have a good time. Right. Also, to reiterate what we were talked about last week, we are going to be on Haunt Chat Live with the Grave Digger, Reverend Michael. It will be at 9 p.m. Eastern Time, 8 p.m. Central Time on April 7th. Um, You can learn more at hauntchatlive.com. It will redirect to his uh, Facebook page, which is pretty much his home base. Right. Um, There's a link to the promo video in the description if you have not seen it already. I'm really excited about this. Yeah, I think it's going to be a great time. And just to extend how great of a time we're going to have with Reverend Michael, we're having him here the week before. So it's a podcaster exchange program thing we got. Exactly. We want to know why does he do what he does. We want to spend a little time with this mad bastard. And yeah. <laughs> talk to him a little. Watching his stuff, he, he seems genuinely crazy. Yes. I like that. <laughs> yes. And if any of you saw him around Transworld, you... Uh, I'm sure you said hi, because he's, he's kind of hard to miss. Yeah. So I am really, really stoked by having him here. Really stoked by being on Hot Chat Live. This is going to be a lot of fun. Yes. Um, I'm really, really excited about all this. It's going to be a very busy weekend for us. Yes, it is. <laughs> because we're doing that on the 7th. We have guests in town. Right. And on the 8th, we're going to WrestleMania. Right. We're nuts. <laughs> Well, it's, we are it's, absolutely clinically 100% well, insane. Well, you know, we, we didn't know about some of that stuff when we scheduled it. So. Yeah, that's true. We, the WrestleMania stuff kind of happened by surprise. Yeah. We kind of got an invite to go and got tickets to go for hosting people. It was all an ambush thing. Yeah. But you don't turn that down. I'm just No. Like, even if you're not a huge wrestling fan, you don't turn that down. Right. That's just, no, you don't. I'm sorry. We've had to we've had to spend much of the past month getting caught up on what's going on in wrestling. Yeah. So we'll have some clue what the hell we're watching. Right. <laughs> anyway. Uh, conference reminders. Maybe we should do those. Probably. <laughs> Before this podcast goes completely off the rail. I believe it is your turn to start. I believe it, it is. It is an odd episode, so it's your turn to start. Mm-hmm. Why don't you kick us off now that Trans World's over? Right. Next thing is April 13th through the 15th. West Coast Haunters Convention in Portland, Oregon, Doubletree Hotel, Portland, touring Milbourne's Haunted Manor. I would be very disappointed if it wasn't a Haunted Manor. No, yes. it's touring some dude's house, Milbourne's Manor. <laughs> yeah. It also includes a costume ball, a silent auction, and the Nightmare After West Coast Haunters Convention Film Festivals with a secret selection of films. Hauntersconvention.com for more info there. Absolutely. Then May 18th through the 20th, in Atlantic City, New Jersey, it's Halloween Show and National Haunters Convention presents Halloween Boardwalk Empire. It's a little harder each time. Yeah. Well, then, um, since we've deleted one, you had to do it two weeks in a row. No, no, no kidding. <laughs> it's at the Showboat Convention Center. We'll feature zombie volleyball, a hearse show, a Mardi Gras-themed costume ball, and much, much more. Learn all the details at HalloweenShow.com. 
Okay. May 25th through the 27th. Midwest Haunters Convention, Columbus, Ohio. Greater Columbus Convention Center. Featuring a masquerade party and a zombie walk. Pre-convention bus tour with eight haunts. Eight freaking haunts, guys. Eight. We, we, we can't even list them all. There's so many. Right. Exactly. But we'll try to list a few. We'll list a few. <laughs> Lessons in Fear, Ohio State Reformatory, Rotten Manor, St. Lucifer, Scream Park, Erebus, and more. Dude, Erebus alone would have been enough to get me in there. Yeah, I know. Oh, man. It, it's so sad that I can't. I just can't. Yeah. Um, yeah. The, the thing is, and we're not at Transworld either. Yeah. And the reason is because these conferences in this area falls in a very bad time for both of our work. Right. You especially. Yeah. Anyway, sorry. We'll, we'll, we'll talk more about that in a minute. Okay. Uh, it also stops in Hell, Michigan for ice cream. Want some ice cream in Hell? Here's your chance. Exactly. Well, I'm sure you could have more Ooh. chances. But MidwestHauntersConvention.com to find out oh, no, no. all about that stuff. Yes, indeed. All right. Then after that, June 22nd to the 23rd in Ulster Park, New York, it's the premier haunted attractions tour and education series at the Super 8 Kingston. It will be touring the Headless Horseman and all seven of its attractions. Speaking of jelly, mm -hmm. oh my god, full itinerary, still TBA, premier haunt tour. Two T's there. Watch yourself as you type it. Mm -hmm. .com. All right. July 27th through the 29th. Room Escape Conference and Tour in Nashville, Tennessee. Music City Center. Tour info still TBA, but you can find out whenever it comes available at roomescapeshow.com. Now, these guys were, this is part of the Trans World lineup of shows. They were promoting this at Trans World, so hopefully more details coming soon. Right. And finally, for us right now, July 28th through the 29th at Long Beach, California, it's Midsummer Scream at the Long Beach Convention Center. More info TBA, midsummerscream.org is your place to learn details. And yes, the big news is as we are recording this, Trans World is just wrapping up, basically. Yep. Um, the drunken haunters are leaving St. Louis. <laughs> I should say hungover haunters are leaving. Yeah. They're probably not drunk anymore. They're probably some well, hungover. They, 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 uh, <laughs> there's you know. probably a mix. <laughs> Those we've never... been seeing your post about how much you've been Yeah, drinking. we've been following Haunters <laughs> Hangout very, very closely watching trends. Because we couldn't go and we probably won't be able to go until job situation changes. Yeah. Because unfortunately you work for a university. Right. And the university's schedule, that's... Yeah, Rough. yeah. This is my busy time. I've got lots of events to plan for yeah, the end a, of school year, and it's also a busy time for my business too because I'm usually planning the end of the year stuff. I'm doing analyses work for mm -hmm. things to come up, and I have students approaching me worried about their um, their dissertations and things like that. So yeah, yeah, it's a busy season for both of us. It's yeah, the middle of the school year. But if you want to suggest which one haunted conference we need to make it to, yeah, tell us yeah, which one's your favorite. Yeah, once again, Haunt Weekly at Twitter and Facebook. I have a feeling everyone's going to say Trans World, but I don't know. Hey, if you got another suggestion, Midwest Haunters is pretty big too. Yeah. Um, one thing I have found interesting, so I've been watching the post very closely. Yeah. It seems like a lot of stuff was Pennywise. Yeah. <laughs> have you been seeing that? Yeah. Everyone is bitching about, hey, have you seen Pennywise yet? I haven't seen anything Pennywise <laughs> in the trans world floor. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, God, guys, come on. Yeah. Seriously, prop builders. I understand wanting to jump on the clown train. Wow, that sounded absolutely horrible. It <laughs> <Thank did. you. laughs> uh, rephrase that. Oh, God. <laughs> I know we all want to have a clown run a train on us. No, <laughs> not that either. <laughs> yeah. But yes. Now, the point is, I know the, like clowns are a big thing right now. Maybe we'll watch that clown movie I found last night. Okay. Well, maybe we'll watch that just to, to fulfill destiny here. But the point of the matter is, come on, don't take Pennywise. Yeah. That's owned by other people. Yeah. I just, I, duh. It, it, this is like one of the most frustrating elements of the haunted attraction industry. We are so creative, and yet when it comes time to build props for sale at Trans World and so forth, so many people feel the need just to copy what mainstream media is doing. Yeah. Now, we did see a lot of videos and things of very cool props we were excited about. Uh, the armless prop. Right. Er my Gert, I love that idea. Oh, that's going into our haunt. Well, not that exact no one. We can't, 
but, <laughs> but something that uses that concept at the very exactly because I think you know the, the concept's what's really really cool about it. Basically, mm-hmm. it's, it it looks like an obvious animatronic with the arms like flailing through pneumatics yeah. and you, and a str- it's like the quintessential prop you would see in like a, a spook house ride at a fair. Yeah, and and then the guy just like separates from the arms and lunges forward. It's bitching. Yeah, I <laughs> love that caught me so off much. Of, <laughs> Watching the video would actually caught me off guard. So yeah. it, it's got to be effective in the haunt. Yeah. Anyways, yeah, we'll I'm sure have more about Transworld next week and in future posts. Maybe we'll talk to Reverend Michael about it. It'd be a great topic to discuss with him. Yep. <laughs> but yeah, so unfortunately we were not there and probably can't be there unless job or unless job situation or timing changes. Yeah. It's unlikely. Right. All right. So Easter. <laughs> yeah. I, I've got to say, we, we've got to begin this one with uh, some disclaimers and some cautions. Right. Obviously, rule one is don't culturally appropriate. Right. That's uh, with any of these that we do. Yeah, any of these that we do. We, we say just that as a time. reminder. It's a reminder. We say it every single time. Yeah. Um, but yeah, definitely don't culturally appropriate. Another thing to keep in mind, though, is Easter's a lot different than Christmas. Right. Christmas has evolved to have a very, very large, I would say, even maybe even larger than the religious component, secular component. Right. And whether you like that or not, that's completely your business. I understand, especially if you are someone who is um, who is Christian and is upset by the heavy commercialization of it. Right. I understand. Yeah. But the fact of the matter remains, for most people, Christmas is a commercial secular thing first and a religious holiday second. Right. And that's just the truth. Easter doesn't have that. No. Easter is still very much solely a religious holiday. Yes. And yes, there are commercial aspects. Go to your freaking Rite Aid or Walgreens or whatever right now and hit up the Easter basket. By the way, have you noticed that Easter baskets kick total (laughs) ass now? Yeah. I got like a fucking thing of plastic grass and a couple of cheap Hot Wheels cars. <laughs> and these kids are getting like hundreds of dollars worth of crap in it. <laughs> what the hell? <laughs> Sorry, off the cuff rant, but Jesus. <laughs> it's like, I, my Easter basket never looked that good. I was lucky to get a chocolate bunny, which we are discussing in great detail in a minute. <laughs> well, I don't know about great detail. Well, in detail. In detail. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Anyways, yeah. But yes, so keep that in mind. Haunts opening for Easter need to tread that line a little more carefully than ones opening for Christmas. For right. Christmas, you can bring in the more secularized characters and more secularized themes very easily, and have a very Christmassy haunt that's not religiously offensive. Right. Exactly. With Easter, that's a lot more difficult. Yeah. There are secular elements, the Easter Bunny, for example, um, and the Easter eggs and various other things. But right. Still. This is definitely a religious holiday first. It's something to be mindful of. Yeah. Seriously, those little brats are spoiled on Easter basket. <laughs> Do I need to get you an Easter basket? No. <laughs> no, I'm a little old now. Thank you. I'm big boy. <laughs> all right. So let's talk about Easter Bunny then. You, you yeah. dug these up, and I think this, all, all this is pretty interesting. Mm-hmm. Um, but apparently it started in Germany in the 19th century. Right. Um, and that's where they started making the chocolate bunnies. Yeah. Now, I've always thought the idea of the chocolate bunny by itself was kind of morbid. It is. Because what's the first part of the bunny you eat? The head. And the ears. Yeah. You start, the head and the ears, basically. Yeah. Yeah, nobody starts tail first. <clears throat> no. <laughs> if you start tail first, you're weird. That's, a, <laughs> that's an unexplored kink you might want to talk to your, <laughs> want to address with your partner. <laughs> I like eating bunny ass. <laughs> it's going to be one of those podcasts. <laughs> one of those podcasts. We have been working in the sun all weekend. Yeah. So, in hot garages. And not not on hot work, unfortunately, on other stuff. So. Right. Trying to get the house ready for guests. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, we're, it might be a little delirious. I apologize uh. for that. But, yeah, okay. Now, the tradition of them becoming hollow, I didn't know this. Right began in World War II when cocoa rationing came into effect. Yeah. Um, and basically they never went back because companies are cheap bastards. Is that what I'm hearing? Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, it's hard to find a solid one. Which, you know, that's okay because have you ever had a solid chocolate? Oh, I'd be so sick. But, well, not only that, but it's hard to bite through. You have to, like, get... In fact, my I had one at one point 
and my dad has a scar because um, he told me to go and get a knife so that we could cut it so mm-hmm. that, you know, you wouldn't break teeth and stuff on yeah. it. <laughs> but, like make it a little chocolate nuggets or something. But yeah, so I was maliciously compliant because at that point I was not allowed to touch knives because I had cut myself too many times. I was like four or five. Yeah, honestly, it's probably <laughs> still good advice. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, I was tiny. Um, so I brought him a plastic knife and he cut it, but he also cut through his hand <laughs> trying to cut this with a plastic knife. Safety knife, my aching ass. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> anyway, so let's talk about the origin. Go ahead. Okay. Um, well, it's, uh, the Easter Bunny comes from Ostra, which is the German pagan goddess mm-hmm. for fertility in spring. Yes. Um, and I also found it interesting that in Switzerland, the Easter Bunny actually has a companion, kind of like Santa has elves. And I'm not going to say what he has in the other ones. We're not going down that road again. No, no, no. You can go back to the other episode. We've episode that. on that. You can go. Don't. <laughs> yeah. Um, but, yeah, in Switzerland, he has a cuckoo bird to to help him out, which actually explains the eggs. <laughs> yeah, I always thought that was weird that the Easter Bunny brought eggs. Yeah. Because I know, like, I've owned a bunny. Yeah. They do leave eggs. Right. But they're not eggs you want to eat. <laughs> no. No. Unless, once well, again, you're exploring <laughs> Well, yeah, and it basically, you know, it's it's fertility in spring, and fertility is eggs, and, yeah. I, you know, I, I get it, but that wasn't explained as a kid. As a kid, you just got colorful eggs, and you didn't know why. Yeah. They were just out of a magical bunny that laid eggs instead of, like, live rabbits. Uh, and then gave birth to live yeah. birth. Yeah, I always thought that was really, really strange. Yeah. Um. So that's a good point to know, is that... The, uh, the reason is because in other traditions, the, uh, the there's a cuckoo bird that leaves the eggs along with the Easter bunny, basically. Right. They're like a, a teen. Yeah. Like, that's a, it's like a weird buddy cop movie or yeah. something. <laughs> As they go through <laughs> leaving stuff and people, this is really weird. <laughs> the cuckoo bird lays the egg and the bunny goes and hides it. <laughs> Sorry. Oh, Lord. But anyways, so it does explain that. <clears throat> but the point of all this and the reason we go through this is because... Most of the traditions we have, those are the secular traditions we have around right. Easter, deal with fertility. Right. And not necessarily fertility in terms of like human fertility, right. as the term has come to mean, but crop and seasonal fertility. Right. Exactly. Um, so think about, you know, new life, new beginnings, yeah. um, har- you know, planting, harvesting, etc. Things like that. Yep. Um, and so one thing I would think of immediately with Easter, and also just because it actually works seasonally, is anything farm-related Yeah, would automatically be an easy one to bring in, just because, A, spring's when you plant most stuff. Not everything, obviously, mm-hmm. but a lot of stuff, a lot of crops get planted in the spring. And it's when people think about planting. Um, some some things. Yeah, some things. I didn't say everything. Yeah. Some things. But in, to, in, the, the stereotype is plant, spring, harvest, and fall. Yeah. Exactly. That's the stereotype. Yeah. yeah, there are some things that start that start blooming in spring that are, are ready yeah. soon after, but you plant those in like well, yeah, December, January. Well, yeah, that's January. one of the things is these, in 2018, we have a more um, round-the-clock horticulture. Or art agriculture yeah, we do. Where things come in season year-round. Yeah. But the historical approach was always plant in spring, harvest, and fall. Right. And that's why these festivals begin spring. It's to bless what you're putting into the ground exactly. and hope for a good harvest come fall. Yep. Um, now, moving on, I guess we want to look at the countries, or do you... Yeah, we can look at the countries. Okay. Because, I mean, we have in the notes to talk about the, uh, the rising from the dead aspect of the Easter story. Right. And the quote-unquote zombie Jesus. Yeah. I'd probably stay away from zombie Jesus. I would definitely stay away from zombie <laughs> Jesus. I would not touch zombie Jesus. Yeah. A, well, he didn't fetch you. Yeah. And zombie Jesus... Hey, Jesus is not a zombie. <laughs> Look, everyone keeps saying that. He's I know. a lich. <laughs> He's risen from the dead and has magical powers. That makes him a lich, <laughs> not <Yeah>. a zombie. <laughs> Get it right. <laughs> All right. But anyways, yeah, I would definitely stay away from that. I'd, um, yeah, that's that's too religious of a, a subject. Yeah, and... I have seen some <clears throat> zombie Jesuses in, uh, in the quarter for Easter. Yeah. Because, you know, they show up there. And, 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 but they're and, also drunk. And, <laughs> and that's also a place where the more offensive yeah. um, things are, I don't want to say encouraged, but tolerated. Yeah. 
Yeah, yeah. I'm I'm very curious, actually, about the Mardi Gras ball that's at the conference because I'm wondering if they're going to have anybody go in actual Mardi Gras costume or if it's just like the masquerade ball with the the yeah, you pretty find the one stuff. in New Jersey, right? Yeah, the one, yeah, the Boardwalk Empire, that one. Yes, exactly. It's almost see, that's and, that, and you're right. That's a good point. It's almost certainly going to be people wearing their you know the green, purple, and gold. Yeah, and wearing the Mardi Gras masks. And what going in gowns and whatever, yeah, dressed up in that up when that's not how people dress for Mardi Gras. No, that's what people think people do for Mardi Gras. Well, that's what they do in the movies, <laughs> but in actual New Orleans Mardi Gras, now it's hilarious costumes, it's, it's all meant to be hilarious, borderline offensive, yeah, just offensive costumes, yeah. It, it, it go yeah. look up Mardi Gras costumes, just, just yeah. Google that on your own time, you'll thank me, yeah. Well, I, I remember the um, after Katrina, all of the refrigerators oh, walking God. around. <laughs> I I remember the refrigerators, <coughs> and you also had um, a lot of people dressing up as FEMA people, exactly wearing FEMA with big name tags and so yeah. forth. That was the locals, Mardi yeah. Gras. We've come to term it. Exactly. That was a good year. That was a surprisingly good year for Mardi Gras for us. Yeah, it was a lot of fun. Okay, so let's look at various countries in the okay. Easter traditions. Let's get sorry. back on track. Yeah, sorry. This is one of those episodes. Uh-huh. Okay, Australia. Yes. They well, hate bunnies. I can understand why. Yes. <laughs> they hate them a lot. <laughs> yeah. Basically, bunnies there are an invasive species. Yes. They were brought over and they procreated like... Rabbits. <laughs> bunnies. <laughs> yeah. And they have... Even the and, and surprisingly for an island where everything is trying to kill you, yeah, bunnies did not have a significant number of natural predators. Right, exactly. <laughs> and so they basically re- they procreate like bunnies, and as a result, the Australians have used a bilby. Yes. Is that how you say it? I'm guessing. Yeah. Which is sort of like a bunny, but highly endangered thanks to bunnies. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that that is really weird. I mean, I, I understand why they don't like bunnies. <laughs> right, I do too. But they replace it with a bunny-ish creature that... Yeah, well, they don't want to, like... I guess they didn't want to be completely different from the rest of the world. You see, I, I would think, honestly, and this is just my logic here, if you hate bunnies, mm-hmm. you'd want the chocolate rabbits. That way you can just like, eat in bunnies. Mm-hmm. It's, like, it's like, you know, whenever I got animal crackers, right... I always didn't want to eat the lions. Yeah. Because I love lions. Right. Giraffes, all you guys, you're dead. <laughs> you were eaten immediately. Yeah. But the lions I kept putting aside as a kid because I didn't yeah. want to eat the lions. Okay, so looking up the bilby, it looks like, like a, a rabbit marsupial hybrid. It looks like a like, possum with big it ears. It looks like God got a little drunk, <laughs> took a giant rat and glued bunny ears on it. <laughs> kind of, yeah. <laughs> but it is cute. <clears throat> no, it's very, very adorable. It's a, and then this is the thing. If you take off the bunny ears, it's not cute at all. No. It's it's a terrifying giant rat marsupial thing. Yeah. It looks like an opossum. Yeah, exactly. Um, yeah, it basically looks like someone took an opossum and glued bunny ears on it. And it's somehow now adorable. I don't know. Yes. Bunny ears make a difference. Apparently. Kind of like how squirrels are just rats with fluffy tails. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, but yeah, so that's an interesting spin on the tradition. Now, the Polish and the Russians, this is one we really have to spend some time on. Yeah. You've said this about ten times in the lead (laughs) up to recording. I don't think I grok this. Um, They make butter, as in butter. Yes. Lamb heads. Yes. No, lambs. Lambs. They make butter lambs. Yes. That are terrifying. Yeah. Some of them, it, yeah. And this is based upon the premise that these lambs will eat people. Well, no, it's that you eat the lamb. Oh, you eat you ew. eat the lamb. Butter, yeah. Yes, you you eat the lamb, but in a haunt, you could turn it around and have the lambs eating the people. You know, it's I'm looking now at the photos of the buttered lambs, uh-huh. the but not buttered lambs. <laughs> Buttered lamb sounds yummy. <laughs> um, buttered lambs. It's really strange. You can tell they're carving them to be cute. Yes. <laughs> you can tell they are... Oh, Jesus. Baby Jesus. No. Sorry. Sweet baby Jesus. Anyway, you're telling them Sweet. they're tra- <laughs> carving them to be cute. 
I, I lost train of thoughts with that image. <laughs> I'm going to include some of these in the uh, show notes yeah. now, because so people, so you guys can see it. Holy Christ! Yeah, so but they can, they're really trying cute. to make them cute, but somehow this is like uncanny valley territory. It is. They they look just realistic enough to be really unsettling and like mm-hmm. deeply disturbing, and I cannot imagine taking a butter knife to them and whatever. And yeah, yeah, this is the one that was with the article. Oh, sweet God. Oh, sweet God. <laughs> it looks terrifying. Um, it's, it looks like alien. It's got these it, huge eyes. It does. I think those are jelly bean eyes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Anyways, yeah. So what was your idea? Um, so Ellie and I were talking about it. We were talking about how you could, like, have a family of lambs sitting down to Easter dinner cutting up people. <laughs> <laughs> Or bunnies too. You could have the you could. animals turning the. You could. You could have. You could flip the script and have the animals <laughs> eating the people. You know, I bet the uh, lambs in particular are very tired of being eaten. Yeah, yeah, but but yeah, they they're terrifying little sculptures, and I've also seen the lamb cakes that are red velvet. Mm-hmm. So when you cut in, a... oh Christ! I yeah. just realized the point of that. Exactly. <laughs> Why would I care that it's red velvet? That's, oh. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, man, we shouldn't record after doing all this work. <laughs> <laughs> My brain clearly is not called up to what's going on around me. Yeah. All right. So, shifting gears and talking about Spain. Yes. The Dance of Death. Yes. All right. Sounds awesome. So, if you want, you know, skeletons and death... In your haunt for Easter, it's completely appropriate. At least in Spain. At least in Spain. Yeah. So it's a, a spooky tradition of skeletons, um, costumes, or robes that symbolize final judgment. And so people come out to be judged by the dancing skeletons, from what I can tell. Yeah, this, there's not a lot written about this one, unfortunately. Right. We, we tried to, I, and you, you, I actually tried a little bit too mm-hmm. to get more on this one. Um, it's known as one of it's Spain's one of Spain's strongest Easter traditions, but right. there's not a lot written in English about it. And unfortunately, your Duolingo, while well, pretty good, <laughs> yeah. in Spain it doesn't really help us much here. No, it doesn't. Um, but yeah, basically, the, you come forth, you're judged by these skeletons, and this, and they decide. If you go to heaven, purgatory, or hell. Right, exactly. Um, and I've got to say, that sounds absolutely mortifying. <laughs> it does. And, you know, I could see this being incorporated as, you know, handing out passes. Like yeah. if you have a group of three, give one to each. Mm-hmm. And you could even, like, send them into different rooms. Yeah. But... Yeah, yeah, I think it's a I mean, really cool idea. Is it just me, or does Spain have some kind of spooky tradition for every holiday? Well, that's because, you know, it's awesome to be spooky. It is awesome to be spooky, and apparently it's awesome to be in Spain. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, yeah, this was a really, really interesting one. I'll, I'll put a link to the article on it we have in the show notes. I'm going to put links to most of this in the show notes. Yeah. Um, okay, the Philippines... Yeah, this is another religious one you probably want to stay away from. Um, and it's really interesting because even though it's a religious one, it's actually one condemned by the Catholic Church. It is, yeah. Basically, um, they reenact the crucifixion. Yes. And by reenact, we should say replicate. Yes. Yeah, the, yes. Volunteers are actually hammered through the hands and feet onto crosses, and then the crosses are raised. Now, we have seen similar reenactments of the crucifixion in other countries, but they usually don't involve actually nailing someone to anything. Exactly. Tying to or yeah, other methods, but yeah. Mm. Yeah, it's, um, it's pretty gruesome. Yeah. Um, this is... I, I'd actually heard about this before <clears throat> we mm-hmm. were doing the research on this, and um, it, yeah, it's, it's brutal. Yeah, and I, I I don't really know what how to articulate it. I mean, yeah, I don't no, really, I don't, there's no real words here. I wouldn't touch this with a twenty foot pole in the haunt. No, but if you want to get some real life horror in your yeah. life, yeah, there you go. 
you have our, well, Norway, Norway. <laughs> yeah, let's let's keep moving on. Norway, we got Norway. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, Norway's tradition is actually pretty badass. Yeah. I like Norway. Yeah. This is like going from one extreme to the other here. Right. Um, basically, in Norway, th this must be like KFC in Japan for Christmas. <laughs> and, like, I don't freaking get this. I don't know how this happened. Yeah. But apparently, it is tradition in Norway to watch crime stories and try to figure out who the killer is. Yes, as a family. As a family. Mm-hmm. And basically, and apparently, in like in Norway, like all the media, like all the television channels, all five of them, because it's right. Norway. <laughs> I'm just kidding, Norway. Yeah. I'm sure you have lovely entertainment, all of it American. <laughs> oh, God. Hey, we've been to the Netherlands. We kind of know that's a little true. <laughs> hey, yeah. If that's the one export we have left, guys, it's mm -hmm. television. we got to hang on to it. <clears throat> yeah. Um, but anyways, all of the media turns to focus on crime dramas. Right. And many, many places, many um, networks will shoot and prepare crime dramas just for Easter. Right. Exactly. So this is like the big day to debut your new crime drama. Yeah, I would I would say it's probably the big day to do like um release a novel. Yeah. You know, right before so that the family can read it on Easter. Um Yeah, and release a movie. And yeah. Them. And you know, they don't have these, as far as I know, I probably should have done some research before I said that. Mm -hmm. um, but, but at least when we were there, we did not see escape rooms. This would be a great Wouldn't place. Wouldn't have been in We have not. You said Netherlands and then... Okay, sorry. Um, yeah. Let me just see if they have escape rooms. Because if not, they should. Somebody should jump on this market and open escape rooms for and Easter. And open crime drama oriented. Yeah, exactly. Like oh, the yeah. murder di dinner, mystery yeah. dinners. And we did the um, the escape room, the bookie. We've done a couple of murder mystery oriented escape right. rooms. Okay, and Norway does have escape rooms. Well, Sorry. I'm pretty sure they had to have them by now. Yeah. I'm I mean, just... This is like a really good market for escape rooms in the yeah, country. Yeah, it does. And like you said, murder mystery troops. Yeah. Those kind of things would be really good there. Now, I don't really know how you'd put this in a haunted attraction, but for an escape room, this seems like an easy win. It does. Because, like I said, and that's the thing, and which I know we said it multiple times, but it should be emphasized, this is a family activity. Right. I mean, just imagine a Norwegian family sitting around a TV, watching a crime drama, yelling about who done it. Yeah. That is Easter in Norway. <laughs> yes. That that seems like a, a This seems like something you could play away to an escape yes. room easy. <laughs> exactly. Instead of yelling at the TV, they could be yelling at each other in your escape room that they paid you to go into. Yes. <clears throat> that seems easy. Mm -hmm. Alright. Slovakia. Wow. <laughs> yeah. You really like to put these like alternating, didn't you? Like, <laughs> like really messed up and really fun and interesting and just normal. Not normal, but like, I don't know. Like, I don't think anymore. Well, it's normal for them. Yeah, it's normal for them. And I guess this is normal for them, but yeah, and in Slovakia, men whip women, yes, you heard that right, and basically dump cold water on them. No, no, no. Oh, they don't do that, okay. No. I misheard that. I think we yeah. said that previously, but okay. I, oh, you're right. But basically, men whip women, and the women, they whip the women they like. Yes. And they, in turn, the women in turn, give them decorated eggs, money, and whiskey. If they're old enough. If they're old enough. Yep. And, and the next morning, if um, a woman was not whipped, if she didn't get her no. valentine. No. Hmm? No, the next morning, um, the women take out buckets of ice water and dump it on the person that they like. Hmm. Whether or not they were whipped or not by that person. Oh, okay, I got it now. Yeah. So... Basically, there's a lot of consent issues here. There are. <laughs> and a, Toxic masculinity. And, and, and a lot of issues here. Yeah. That, but. Yeah, I don't see how this could be incorporated, but, no, but it's interesting. It is very interesting, and it is a um, very violent spectacle. Yeah, it is. Yeah, I really Definitely don't know what is. to make of this one. Um, mm -mm. Like I said, I don't think you could really incorporate it into a haunt. You said, like you said, I didn't say it. You, I don't <laughs> think you could really incorporate this into a haunt. But unless you had, you know, your victim who was working with someone being chased, um, but that 
that seems like it's a standard scene anyway in some haunts. Um, yeah. Just to have victims. Yeah. It, it doesn't seem... Yeah. Like anything that... uh, Anything we can incorporate. No. Okay, shifting to uh, Finland real fast. Mm-hmm. I like Finland. <laughs> um, Ellie, uh, who we've had on this podcast before, she is... A Finnish descendancy, I guess is the way to describe it. Her, yeah. la- her original last name, her birth last name was Hautamäki. Yeah, her dad was Finnish. Her dad was Finnish, so yeah. Yeah. Um, long story short, in Finland on Easter, you watch grass grow. Yep. Literally. Yep. So, I looked up a little bit more about this. Okay. Um, basically, kids plant grass seeds in a shallow dish and then, like, watch for it to spring up. On Easter. But you know, <laughs> as boring and as uninteresting as that sounds, when you go back to what we talked about previously, yeah. about how all this deals with spring fertility, right? it makes sense. Mm-hmm. Plus, it's Finland. What else are you going to do? Yeah. You can't fight the Russians all the time. Well, I mean, they, they do have other traditions, but that was the big one that made a lot of the list. Um... Was that, you know, it, they just, they watch that, yeah. There are, um, yeah. yeah they watch just, grass grow. <laughs> I don't think you can incorporate that in a haunt. I would uh, feel very bad for your haunt if you did. <laughs> yeah. Meanwhile, you can go from that to the uh, paint drying room. Mm-hmm. I'm sure it'd be great. Yep, exactly. All right, but let's get to our last country because this one's actually really exciting. Mm-hmm. Um, basically, in Denmark, yeah. what do they do? They have another Halloween. Yay! Two Halloweens. That is awesome. Basically, yeah. children wake up with a bucket of candy or buckets of candy, depending upon, and they put on a scary witch or and or warlock costume. I'm not yeah. here to judge. And they go door to door asking for more candy. Yep. Sounds like Halloween to me. Um, and basically, in return, the kids give the house a decorated willow branch for good luck. Yeah. Now, there's something interesting that I, I noticed about that is, is in this trick-or-treat tradition, if you will, Right. there is something given back. Yeah. We don't have that in the United States. No, and, and this is... Um, and they do have Halloween, too. Yeah, I know. Where you don't give anything. You just take okay. the candy. But, no, for this one, for Easter, they actually give you a little branch, a willow branch that's decorated, and say, hey, good luck with your stuff. Yeah. <laughs> that, that, that's really interesting, though. Mm-hmm. And, uh, once again, I think it plays back to the whole fertility thing. I mean, because yeah. the whole fertility thing is about good luck. Exactly. Wishing you good luck with the planting, good luck with the crops, good luck with the harvesting. It's all about good luck. So it makes complete sense that this would be about good luck. Yep, exactly. So we've got a little bit of time left. Yeah, there were some other traditions okay. that what were... what you got? Well, in Italy, they, uh, they put a candle on top of a three-story thing and I don't know how to describe it it's a thing <laughs> and it's it they the article described it as a Rube Goldberg machine so basically the candles on top and the bottom is loaded with fireworks all right I'm listening so then they, they you have my attention now it's obviously on, you're it, losing it <laughs> it's on wheels and they they pull it through the town to the final destination How spot. How the hell is Italy not burned <laughs> to the ground multiple times? Oh, no, no, no. Um, th- one of the other customs in Germany is to burn your Christmas tree on Easter Day. <laughs> <laughs> Am I the... Okay. And Let's they talk. use... And a lot of places still use real candles on their trees. How is Germany not burned from that? And and we're having Easter early this year. Easter's on April Fool's right. Day this year. Um, That is still... Literally three months away. Yeah. Yeah. And that's about the earliest... It's close to the earliest Easter you're going to get. Right. I think you can get it a little bit earlier. I don't remember all the details. I should know because I live in New Orleans and we know Mardi Gras and Mardi Gras and Easter and everything Mm -hmm. plays out. But we had a super early Mardi Gras this year and a super short season between Epiphany and Mardi Gras. Right. Um, 
That's bananas. <laughs> yes. Yes, it is. But anyways, it's fireworks. So they drive through the town with this Rube Goldberg machine. I guess it's passing the fire yeah. from like thing to thing. And uh, and then setting off fireworks. Yes, at the end. You beautiful mad bastards. <laughs> I, I love this, but I shouldn't. <laughs> yeah. There are also lots of places that do giant bonfires. No, obviously, yeah. Um, bonfires are a common tradition at Easter. Yeah. <clears throat> now, one question I have immediately is, as I said earlier, Easter this year was on April Fool's Day. Yeah. <laughs> That's going to be interesting. Mm-hmm. Um, and it raises a serious question. Is um, Easter going... Like, how are those two going to play together? Like, are people still going to do April Fool's Day jokes, or are they just going to celebrate Easter? What's the plan? Or are they going to do both? Are they going to fill the little eggs with, you know, not not candy? Like shaving cream or something. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like fun. I'm a horrible human being, aren't I? Yeah. Oh, look, a Cadbury egg. <laughs> I was talking about the little plastic ones you hide and put oh. candy inside of them. <laughs> no, I was Cadbury eggs. Yeah. Because I'm a terrible person. We've established this part. Well, and you don't eat those anyway. No, that's so. true. I am safe. <laughs> <clears throat> so should, I mean, honestly, I don't think Easter is as rich in traditions that can apply to a haunt as no. Christmas is. Christmas in a lot of places is exceptionally horror based yeah and it's kind of weird because when we did the Christmas episode I realized that we were the weird ones in the United States and that we had like no horror components to right. Christmas and that it's like when horror movies finally started taking to Christmas it was very foreign to us right do you know what I mean yeah I do and other parts of the country are like, yes, of course there's horror stuff with Christmas. What are you talking about? I and mean, of course there is. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but here it seems a little more like most places have very, I, I don't want to say, but I guess benign yeah. traditions. I mean, you might think grass growing is exceptionally strange, <laughs> but it's a very benign, non-horror related tradition. Yeah. I mean, obviously what Denmark is doing Mm-hmm. is Halloween related and Halloween connected. Right. And also you have, you know, for example, like what uh, uh, Slovakia is doing with the whipping of the women and obviously the Poles and the Russians yeah. are, the Polish, I should say, are, and the Russians are doing something very terrifying. Yes. With the uh, lambs. But I think Spain might actually have the uh, creepiest tradition. Yeah. With the I, skeletons, judging you. I think you. so. Yeah. Um, yeah, so this was very, very interesting read-through. I just, it doesn't seem like there's a lot culturally here. Yeah, and, you know, the Easter Bunny can be a scary character. And it's easy to make messed up rabbits. Yes, it is. In fact, and this is 100% true here, when we were doing Garbage Horror Reviews, yes. the very... <laughs> first review we did episode one of garbage horror was a movie called cottontail yep which involved a murderous rabbit yes that was a fun one to reenact (laughs) yeah we got some weird looks from the neighbors (laughs) yeah (laughs) got some weird looks as i sit there rolling in the ground tussling with a um stuffed stuffed rabbit (laughs) oh boy fun times fun times (laughs) yeah Unfortunately, uh, that episode had to be uh, a lot of the audio had to be dubbed. We didn't have a lot of good audio equipment at that time. Right, we got better. Yeah, we, we did. got better though. We did, but still, um, that was a fun one. But yeah, so you can do it. There are things you can do with it if you do want to open your haunt at Easter. Mm-hmm. It's just going to be significantly more challenging than other holidays. Right, and there are some horror themed movies yeah. to get the information of, yeah. of, you know, inspiration yeah. from. Um, I've got a, a list that I'm looking up. And, okay. Uh, what you got? Cereal Rabbit looks fun. Mm. And Easter Bunny Kill Kill. Easter Bunny Kill. <laughs> Easter Bunny Kill Kill. Okay, that sounds awesome. <laughs> we, we might be ne- watching some of these next weekend. <laughs> yeah, you got uh, yeah Peter Rottentail. I think we're on the same list now. Yeah. And Cottontail is actually on the list. It is. And I Easter Casket. I was a Japanese film at the time. No, I didn't realize that either. Easter casket, yeah. There's there's a lot of good 
Easter related horror films. Mm -hmm. But most of it actually isn't directly Easter. Yeah. And that it's more to do with just bunnies. Yeah. Well, and, you know, and Peter Cottontail is another name for the Easter bunny. Yeah. Um, There's tradition set there for that precedent, so. Yeah. But yeah, no, all in all, it's definitely an interesting holiday. I don't really know how much of it directly parlays into doing haunted attractions, but we wanted to give it our all and give it a try and then, you know, share some of the more interesting traditions we discovered along the way in our research. Right, exactly. And that's really the point of this episode. Yeah, because, you know, as we branch out into more and more holidays, we need more inspiration. Yeah. You know, we can't just stick, well, I mean, I guess you could just stick a few eggs and a bunny inside of your traditional haunt. But that seems like phoning it in a little bit. Well, one thing you could do and possibly might want to consider is hiding Easter eggs in the haunt where customers can't access them. Yeah. And that way, offer prizes for an Easter egg that's returned or something like that. Yeah, that would be fun. You could do that. That'd be fun. That'd be a very harmless way to do it. Yeah. In fact, you don't even have to have Easter eggs like an actual egg that you take but um things like a a checklist of things to find and if people see it as they're terrified because that works um, (laughs) they could write it down or remember where it was and see how many they get and get a prize at the end bunny man (laughs) the sweet mother (laughs) okay this is a hell of a weird list Yes, it is. Oh, God. What's, what's one of your favorite Easter memories? Um, Actually, my favorite Easter memory of all time, I think, was one year, and we got to realize I'm 37, about to be 38 years old this year, so Easter, this is going back into the 80s, early 80s, yeah. back when computers were not what anything what they were today. Mm-hmm. My uh, dad got on his Tandy 2, <laughs> the Tandy 2, and... Did an Easter egg scavenger hunt for me and my brother. Basically, got in there. He typed up instructions where to find the next egg right. and hid them inside the plastic eggs on these little slips of paper that he printed on an old dot matrix printer that sounded like a steam factory. <laughs> <laughs> printed. How did that not wake you up? <laughs> you know, I I don't know. Maybe he did it while we were not in the house or something. But yeah, yeah. That thing was. I don't know if you remember those old old dot matrix printers. They were mm-hmm. loud. They were slow. So this took serious time for him to do, to program and make this. Yeah. And it was awesome. We really enjoyed it. We went all over the house and the yard, front yard, backyard, even a little bit into the neighborhood. Mm-hmm. Um, he put a lot of work into it. And it, was a, it was a memory I definitely have. So maybe um, if, you, if you're doing Easter for your kids, maybe don't buy the uh, $100 Easter basket that makes them <laughs> jealous yeah. for them. Maybe yeah, uh, do something like that. Give them a memory, because hey. that's that's actually very similar to my favorite. Which is sorry. Um, uh, it's a it's a scavenger hunt. No, oh. yeah, my mom did it by hand. Yeah. <laughs> Yours used technology, mine did it by hand. But it was the same. That's the one that well, sticks out the most. If we're going to well, be okay, hun- go ahead. If we're going to be hundred percent honest, the only reason he did it on computer was because he wanted an excuse to get on the computer. Yeah, that's fine. Um. <laughs> but, he had to justify that computer somehow. He did. No, but that was the most fun. Um, we begged for that to be done again. <laughs> it never was. Yeah, same here. <laughs> same here. Yeah, yeah, but but that definitely is the most memorable one. Um, that and my cousins and I finding an Easter egg the next year during an Easter egg hunt at my grandmother's yeah. from the year before. Like real eggs? Yeah. <laughs> oh, no. there, was an actual, there was actually an Animaniacs good idea, bad idea about that. Yeah. <laughs> good idea finding Easter eggs on Easter morning, bad idea finding Easter eggs on Christmas morning. Exactly. You managed to actually beat that bad idea yeah. by about three months once again. Exactly. <laughs> oh, no. That's horrible. Mm-hmm. Well, anyway, so yeah, I guess that's one thing you might want to consider is uh, scavenger hunt challenges for Easter egg. We didn't, yeah. That didn't even come up in the traditions. No. But it's, yeah, since we both have uh, a good memory of those, maybe something to think about. Yeah. Well, we're pretty much out of time. I hope you enjoyed exploring international Easter traditions with us. Yes. A lot of them are messed up. Yeah. A lot of them are mundane. 
but they are all completely normal to the countries that they take place in. So keep that in mind. Yep. Well, on that note, everyone, once again, take a moment, follow us at Haunt Weekly on Twitter, Haunt Weekly at Facebook. You can find us at hauntweekly.com and at tinyurl.com slash hauntweekly, which is our YouTube channel. All the videos are stored there for posterity and posterior. Mm -hmm. Until next time, I'm Jonathan. I'm Crystal. And this was Haunt Weekly episode number 121 as we discuss Easter, our, our Easter specials, what we're going to yeah. call it. Our Easter special. We will see you guys next time.